I feel good, uh, even though I shouldn't. I'm chilling so hard, couldn't tell you where the hood is. Uh, I'm looking like a million bucks, sucker. I'm Welcome to This Week in Music. My name's Ian Rogers, and we are here at historic Oceanway Studios in Nashville. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful building. And joined now by Mark Montgomery, who is the founder of a, of a thinkery called Flow, Flow Thinkery. Thanks, <laughs> yes. thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. What thanks, in the world Ian. is a thinkery? It's a made-up word. Um, it is a uh, group of incredibly smart people uh, organized around solving problems for businesses and starting new ones. All right, we're going to come back to that. So okay. first, I want to go back a little bit in your in your in your history. How did how did you end up? Um, you used to run a company called Echo. Do you want to go back uh, further than that? Uh, well, well, we could. I mean, yeah. Uh, what I'll do is go back way back for a minute. Uh, Fit and early, 11 years old. Music saved my life when I was really young. Provided this escape. Um, I just knew I wanted to be close to it my whole life. So double platinum, Kiss, first record, followed by Zeppelin and the Doors and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Just I started of, with Kiss as well. Who wouldn't? Uh, and so I um, uh, got bit early, uh, did every job in the music business, but work at a record company when I arrived here uh, in Nashville with $800 to be a guitar player. Right I'm a songwriter, uh, right from Green Bay, Wisconsin, via um, parts unknown, including right. touring as a hair metal guy, Right. formerly. No, 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 there's nothing left. Right. And um, I got here in uh, 91, kind of right when the town was really, when Garth was really starting to ramp and things were really going, and I uh, took a job sweeping the floor at a vinyl pressing plant and working uh, nights in studios and just trying to be close to it. And... Um, I accidentally uh, discovered the internet. I was the second guy to, to find it. It was Al Gore and then me. Right. And uh, in 94, started building uh, websites and just playing around with, you know, the, what was the, inter the internet at that time. Sure. And then in 90, late 95, um, discovered commerce on the web and started selling music directly to consumers in, on April 20th in 1996. Wow. And that sort of set my path. Um, and you know, seeing that, and then um, you know, sort of a, a shift in in distribution, and then watching Napster fundamentally change the distribution of content. Um, the businesses that I was in historically didn't make any sense to me. We started a company called Echo. Um, when did you start Echo? Echo was uh, started in '99, um, co-founded by a, a guy named Neil Einsman and myself, and uh, we built the business. Um, we, it was a really interesting company in the sense that. Um, when we started, it had four lines of distinct business. We were a distribution company, traditional brick-and-mortar distribution. Um, it was 80% of our business, um, web, uh, commerce, and marketing. And so we kind of did all those things and started out with you know the typical startup, three people, started growing. Um, we were uh, uh, cash flow positive right, right out of the gate. We had clients. Um, there were a couple of sort of events that occurred. In the in the life of the company, one um, there was a, a comp there's a company here called Gaylord Entertainment that went on a little buying spree, decided they wanted to be in the digital arena, and uh, they don't do very well outside of their core business, which is hotels. So they bought up all these companies, all these companies got acquired, and then they basically ran them into the ground. So uh, when all of that fell, we were the only game in town that did commerce on the internet for artists, and so we went from having a small cadre of clients to having 500 overnight. Wow. And uh, so that really pushed us into the business. We, when we started the company in 99, we started with the idea that in five years we needed to be out of all but direct consumer distribution. Um, we got out of that business in six years, blah, blah, blah. The company continued to grow. Um, in 2005, we launched a piece of intellectual property called Echo Tools, mm -hmm. um, and that's when the company just sort of took off. Which was what? What was Echo Tools? Uh, Echo Tools was a, a, a platform for understanding the consumer, serving the consumer, and it was really from the first touch on, on the web. Um, I love Dirk Bentley, I love Keith Urban, I love Kanye West. Go to that website. From there, we began to manage that consumer through uh, a system called Permission Marketing and we would basically build profiles on those consumers. And sort of at our peak as a company, uh, we were serving about 150 million pages across the entire network, uh, doing millions of dollars of commerce and about four and a half terabytes of data flowing in and out of it at any given time. And the thing that I remember about Echo Tools, it was, there, was, there was data not only for the artists, but also 
for brands. Brands, yeah. demographic data Absolutely. and that sort of thing. It was really pioneering in that way. And it was the other thing that I think, you know, we we did really well was I think we were we were ahead of the curve seeing kind of where where things were going. So we started collecting mobile for example in 05 we started collecting mobile phone numbers. And everybody's like, why are we collecting these mobile phone numbers? And I'm like, I'm not quite sure why, but I'm sure this is going to be important, so let's just start doing it. Right. So when mobile really started to, started to take off, we already had 40% of our users' mobile numbers. So it became, it became for us about trying to lead um, into this idea that direct-to-fan is, is going to be where, where this business is going to be in the next 10 years. Right. And so I think... Um, that that was uh, uh, it was an, it was a really interesting ride, and then we sold the business in '07, and uh, I stayed around and tried to be a good corporate citizen for a couple of years. And, and you sold the business to uh, IAC Ticketmaster. Right. So um, we were actually sold technically to IAC Marketing Partners, but right. acquired uh, effectively to become part of Ticketmaster's um, vision. I think at the time, uh, which obviously changed dramatically when they merged into Live Nation Entertainment. And sure, yeah. That's a whole, I could, I could, we could spend the entire 30 minutes just talking about that, but we won't. Right. <laughs> so, so then, so then, so you, you spent some time being a corporate citizen, you were saying, and then how, how long, when did you, when did you jump out of there? And uh, I left in February of 2009. Uh, so, uh, I, I, when I left the company, um, I basically uh, had spent from 99 until that point, you know, pushing fairly hard. Yeah. So I took a break um, and I did some, I did a little bit of work. I, I went to work for a venture firm just to, as a fractional head, as an entrepreneur in residence for them. Did some work with them. Um, I did some traveling, uh, just kind of. Didn't and then, impress. yeah, and then the other thing was, uh, you know, uh, I, I had kind of when you you probably know this you you get a company you get investors you start basically doing all every your life revolves around that work yeah and uh, I had lost a lot of the the creative side of what I was doing and um, I'm a photographer and a, I was a former art director and so I have a lot of that baked in me but I was not taking um, any care of it. Right. And so I dusted off my uh, all my gear and my I have my drum kits and my all this shit, pardon my French, and uh, started uh, doing a what I call a musician's poker night. There was no poker involved. We just got together and played music together. Right. And that turned into um, well, maybe I could still do songwriting. Maybe I could still side man. And so I just started putting myself out there. Right. And uh, over the last year or so um, have spent um, a pretty good amount of time uh, working inside the creative, pure creative side of the business. So I write with um, some of the best songwriters in Nashville. I'm not writing with all the best ones yet, but I, I'm very much into the idea of being the dumbest guy in the room. So if you want to be a great songwriter, don't write with half-assed songwriters, write with great songwriters. Right. And so I do that. I do commercial country songwriting one day a week, which is not enough, but it's what I have time for right now. And then on the weekends, I play in a rock band. And, so, you know, that's we've taken that to another extreme and built a studio and uh, a soundstage and blah, blah, blah. So, so, so you're getting your work-life balance a little back in order? Yeah, it's. I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to let my next career dictate my life. I'm going to build my, my life around my, up my, or my career around my life, not the opposite. Yeah, I, I, think, that's, I think that's smart. And I think it's really hard for, for entrepreneurs to do that. I mean, yeah. I know I find it really difficult and you're always struggling with it and sleep ends up going at the last moment and yep. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's something to endeavor. Yeah, five o'clock in the morning you're awake and it's like, what am I gonna do? Yeah. You know, and, and it's... I, the, the resisting going to the keyboard, the computer keyboard, and going to a guitar, yeah. or reading a book, or doing something that's not related to, and I've actually found it helps my business life. Um, you know, when you're trying to solve problems, it's amazing to me how many people who are attempting to address a marketplace don't actually understand who their customer is or what their needs are. They just yeah. assume that they know and really have no idea. Yeah, you, know, you, ha you have to be, you have to be part of, and I'm sure that, that the, it's not only that, but the connections that you make when you're songwriting or playing mm -hmm. in the band end up being connections that you bring into your professional world too, right? Yeah. 
So what are what are you doing professionally though? Because you've definitely been ramping up with flow um, and getting involved with with. I mean, I'm surprised, frankly, knowing the things that you have going on. I'm surprised you have time for the band and the songwriting and the family because yeah. I know you're you've got a lot going on professionally. Well, you know, I mean, what what I. Um, my wife has said this to me, and I guess it's uh, uh, it's probably true. I can get a lot done. I get probably more done in two days than most people get done in a week, because I'm very good at sort of prioritize. I just have this knack for it, and so um, you know what what I'm into is in big buckets three things, and they're all kind of interrelated. One is I'm into um, this this city becoming the epicenter of the new music business. We have every piece and part we need to make this the, the place where the solutions to all, all these quote unquote problems um, emanate from. Um, I think that, that uh, uh, we have so much going for us as a city and we do a pretty good job of talking about it, but we don't do a great job of talking about it. And so um, that obviously will benefit me because all boats will rise in that tide. Um, the second thing is, is I'm, I'm focused on working on stuff that's interesting with people I like. So I don't really care. Like in, in my case, I have um, in my portfolio of investments, I'm in a business intelligence investment. I'm in a pure music investment or two actually. I'm in a healthcare investment. Um, I do, as, a, as an investor, I do a variety of things. And um, my criterion there is, you know, is it addressing a huge market opportunity? And is it with, with people that are interesting to be around? And can I add some real value to, to that beyond writing a check? Right. Um, and then uh, the third thing for me is, is, is really working, um, giving back to the, to the community as, as a whole. Um, I'm very involved in the Center for Entrepreneurship here, which is a, a part of creating a bright light in the city for why why come here as opposed to going to San Francisco or going to New York. Um, I'm working with the W. Smith School of Music um, on their board. I'm a financial contributor. Uh, I believe that any institution that is providing normalcy to kids who have none and particularly using the music vehicle is incredibly important. Not enough people know about the work they do. And so the, the, the philanthropic piece of this, if you want to call it that, activism, whatever you want to call it, is about building this market up. And my, my strategy is, is that if we make this a better place for everybody, that I will benefit as a result of it. So why Nashville? I mean, apart from the fact that this is where you live, what's, what's, the, what's the benefit? If, I'm, if, you're, you know, if you're someone who's watching this and you're not in Nashville, um, why, why would you build your business in Nashville? Well, I mean, I think that we, we have, uh, there's, there's a long list, but when you look at the cost of living, when you look at the, the sort of the friendliness of the, of the market geographically, you're within 60% of the U.S. population on a one day's drive and 80% on a two day's drive. So geographically, we're incredibly interesting as a, as a uh, city. Um, we have all the infrastructure you could possibly need. You're sitting in a studio with the biggest Neve in the world. You know, so if you're if you're playing in the music space or generally the digital media space, access to the kinds of tools you need, um, connectivity, all that stuff, you're sitting in the middle of, of a lot of that. Then you have quality of life. You have great restaurants. You have, I mean, we don't have as many restaurants as New York. I mean, no one has as many restaurants as New York, but the, the, the air is great. It's good great. food. Um, we, you know, we've got a great symphony hall. We've got. In my mind, the best museum for music in the world is the Country Music Hall of Fame. I um, agree. And, you know, so we have all this stuff going for us. We, we lack a few things, and I don't think we do a very good job, in my mind, of telling our story to the market. Because when you go, I mean, when I was at SF Music and Tech, um, last, uh, not this last one, but the previous one, I'm sitting on a panel with a bunch of uh, uh, guys from Venture and the guy from the San Jose Mercury News, and he's like, you guys have... You, you have venture investing in Nashville? I'm like, dude, you have no freaking clue what you're missing in Nashville. Right. And, and so a lot of that is about just steady progress. And I spent a little time, you know, um, trying to do it politically. I'm not a great politician. Um, you know, when you, when you disagree with public officials publicly, they generally don't like that. Right. Um, but I've kind of taken the, 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 the mode of, I'm not really gonna 
I'm not going to do it politically. I'll u- I'll do what I have to do politically. The way to the way to grow this market is to build it commercially. Yeah. And so th- that's kind of um, what I'm up to in, in broad strokes. And then so what what is it? What what's the model? Of for what? For what you're trying, what you're building with flow and and otherwise. Well, I think the model is. Um, uh, being the dumbest guy in the room is kind of the basis for everything I try to do. So uh, the model around flow is, is, is I, I noticed over my last couple of years floating around in the marketplace, all these guys hunkered down in coffee shops who were incredibly brilliant, um, who were just kind of working on their own and, and were looking for something bigger. And uh, I was getting opportunities and not having the capacity to, to do all of the work associated with those opportunities. And so f- in, in Flo's case, we don't disclose our clients. That's, that's up to them if they want to disclose it. But uh, we are actively, um, we just finished naming um, a, a consumer healthcare product. Um, and we're now helping them ascertain a go-to-market strategy and helping them pick a partner. Um, we're working with a large, actually a, an incredibly large entertainment brand to expand um, that business from the core of music to two or three other ideas around that. They see over the next 10 years, they'll see somewhere between 7 and 10 million people. Um, that's a pretty interesting platform to launch products off of. Right. Um, so kind of right in, right in our wheelhouse, um, we're working with uh, a healthcare you know, company uh, we just finished a, a, a deep dive on a, we had a venture firm come to us and say, and, it, and as you know, venture firms have a hard time admitting they were wrong, but we, we have an investment here we're not sure about. We, we've got a capital call coming up. We need you guys to take a 10, 10 day deep dive into this thing and tell us what you think. Right. You know, and so uh, it's, it's any combination of those things. And then doing fundraising and you know, just kind of whatever, if they come in the door and you go, wow, that's really freaking cool, um, you look at the bandwidth and go, can we do this? We all kind of huddle up and go, yeah, we can do it. So how are those services related to the investment side of what you do? Well, right now the investment side of what I do is purely um, personal. So uh, a lot of what Flow does is just driven by my current investing. Um, where we will take it, uh, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time, uh, you know, today that somebody has suggested, well, you should start a fund. Um, I haven't made that decision yet uh, but it seems like that's a logical place to go uh, and in in my mind um, when you look at having spent some time in working inside venture firms and there are exceptions to this right so you know we've talked about a little bit about your guys the foundry guys uh-huh. um, I think there a lot of a lot of the investment firms historically particularly in our market or in the southeast um, bring a bring a kind of well they bring money right and then they bring a set of skills beyond that but the skills are not really that deep and so you compare and contrast that to um, the group that I have put together and you've got guys who built um, billion dollar consumer footwear businesses and the, the 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 way that we're structured allows us to be number one a lot more flexible number two to uh, apply a set of thinkers to uh, an interesting problem or market opportunity in a way that it isn't, here's our formula, you have to do it the way we want you to do it. We look at the problem and say, who can help solve this problem? That's a, a, a pretty different market approach. And so you take all that and, and then you say, okay, we have that. Now let's put some, let's apply some money to that. That looks pretty interesting. Right. And, and just to bring it back to the to music, you you you've stayed involved with some of your investments in the music space. Yeah. You, you mentioned that, that there are a couple of them now. What what are they? And can you talk about them? Um, Artist Growth is one, uh, and which is an app I just saw for the first time at, at SF Music Tech. It just launched. Yeah, it correct? just launched, and 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 they're rapidly sort of iterating it. Um, what is it? Give it for our for our user for our listeners. Give us a uh, give us a sense of what that is. In a nutshell, it it uh, takes uh, what in my mind historically has been um, an incredibly sort of difficult process to keep all the balls in the air, and it helps you organize your entire career into an application. And it does a lot of the dirty work. So if you've got a gig and you put that gig out 20 days ahead of you, it loads your calendar up with reminders and says, "Hey, did you post about this? Did you?" And you do. You go do the gig. We're doing a, an integration with BMI, so you will actually be able to t- 
tell BMI that you performed your songs publicly in these clubs and get paid, what a concept, right. and then when you're doing your merch sales, you'll be able to, to basically close the night out and look at your look at the accounting. So if you're building, you know, to me, entrepreneurs and artists are the same thing. They're the they're they're both really entrepreneurs. Yep. If you're building a business around your music career, it, it's it is effectively everything with a few exceptions you need on a mobile phone to run your business. So and if somebody wants to check it out, they it's artist growth. Artist and growth. You can get it out of the yep. artistgrowth.com you can get it out of the app store as well. You can well. get it out of the app store as well and it's on um, Android and uh I thought it was a really impressive app. It looked it, it looked very well done, and it reminded me, you know, the Bandai's guys a few years yeah. ago, um, a similar thing. But you know, those guys, I don't think that was ever a full time endeavor for them, and these guys are taking a, a real run at it. And, well, um, and they've got ha I'm happy to see it. They've got really um, there's there's they, you know, I, again counting myself as the dumbest guy in that particular pool of investors. There's some heavy duty cats in that deal. And, Can you say who they are? Uh, Harry Jacobson, who ran um, Vanderbilt's entire infrastructure, who's, uh, when you look at that platform in the abstract, right. healthcare is right behind it. Sure. You know, and, and the way that the deal is structured is really interesting. So it allows them to go run what they're passionate about, Matt and Johnny. That's their deal. They're they're, touring they're, they're freaking touring artists. They're solving their own problem. Right. And that's a business vertical that they can go do all day long. They're not going to go do healthcare, but the way that the the, the deals are structured allows um, the parent company to license that same core technology to another vertical. Gotcha. Um, so for me as an investor, it not only sort of satiates my desire to be involved in the music space, but as a pure investor, it's a it's a really smart structure that allows it to go do two or three or four other. that makes sense because i think it's one of those things where it's a it's a the application the value of the application is clear yeah the question only question is how big is the market right so. and I, yeah and, and 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 you know when you look at kind of do you want to in my mind do you want to have everybody right or do you want to have the ones that matter and yeah you know i mean we, we, we won't name names, but there are a lot of people that have everybody in the yeah. space, right? But most of them are not really doing it, um, like Anani DeFranco. I mean, to me, you know, the, the kinds of clients Topspin services, in my mind, are actually the working class and, and some of the elite class of musicians, and that's where the business gets done. Yeah, and, and you know the 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 challenge then is if that that's a that's a cut that working class is a customer base in the tens or hundreds of thousands at best. Yeah, um, and uh, you know you've got to to build to build successful businesses. You have to get you know you have to get a, into the yeah. high hundreds of thousands or millions. Right? Well, and that's that's why when you look at um, you know again purely as an investor, the proof of concept over here app applied to healthcare. Uh, absolutely. Exactly. Oh, right. So, what about the other investment? Um, I, I'm I've been working with the guys at Sorted Noise for a while, and uh, which is a, a really interesting business. They're a very interesting little business, and and they they sort of fit the. Um, uh, to me, they they recognize that the cheese has been moved, and they've moved with it. And, and I think generally have a good sense of where it is. Give people an idea of what sort of noise does. Um, well, sort of noise. What what I think people perceive they do is that they're a, they're a library music company, right, or so if I'm a, or a custom library. So if you're NBC and you want to fill in the blank, right, um, a piece of music, you go to these guys. Right. And and they do provide that service. But what they I think have done is is they have figured out that um, tying. Uh, interesting acts that, that control Circle P and Circle C to large brands and using that as a vehicle to launch with and then helping um, those artists uh, think about their company like a company as opposed to we're getting in a van with a boat, you know, with, a, with CDs and guitars and we're going to go out on the road. Right. They're actually thinking about how do we build this into a, into a machine. Um, and, and the services that they're wrapping around it, including film and television and the advertising relationships. And now what we're doing with them is, is we're actually saying, okay, at the core, this thing works. You know, it's making money. Right. Um, what they need now is they need a couple of strategic advisors, they need a little bit of capital, and they need, they need a little bit more focus. Right. And 
they have sort of self-organized. You know, when I met them, they were all kind of running it. Right. And they're now kind of, they've kind of self-organized themselves into, okay, I do this and I do that and here's our CEO. And, you know, they're, they're a great example in my mind of the kind of investing you want to do, which is in, you're always betting on the team first. I mean, your investors in your deal are betting on you and, and the founders and, and the and team the CEO, you've yeah. built at least as much, if not more, than, than the actual platform. Because the platform, you will continue to improve and, and make better. And so it's all about the idea is close and we're going to keep working on the idea. Yeah. But if you can't have the team that gets the, the ball in the end zone, absolutely. it doesn't matter how great the idea is. No, absolutely. It's, it's, it, you, know, you, you always hear investors talking about investing in people. It's also, it also seems to me a great example of the kind of business that can and should emerge from Nashville. Yeah. Right? I mean, you talk, these guys, they had an idea, they, they pulled it together, they, they sort of set their course and found their way and sorted out those roles. Yep. Um, in, a, in a place that is receptive to what they do, is music-based, they can afford to live, you yeah. know, all the things you mentioned earlier. And, and you know, I mean, they have, uh, uh, they've, got, they've got nice facilities, they've done it very smartly, though. I mean, carrying the overhead in this joint, no thanks. Yeah. You know, um, they've, they've done a, they've, they've set it up very smartly. Um, you know, if you, if you are caught up in the trappings of power, um, it's very easy to have your business turn upside down. If you're focused and you're operating you're, you're bootstrapping your ass off and you're you're really thinking about are we doing this because of how it looks or because it actually is important yeah um, they've kind of got that figured out and and that's really rare one thing that's clear with all the investments you've done from echo up to artist growth and sort of noise is that you're if you think about the value chain between artists and consumers you're always much closer to the artist end yeah is that is that by design do you see yourself doing anything with that that's more at the consumer end um consumer consumer music or consumer entertainment applications well i mean i think that that the you by proxy you're close to consumers because consumers are drawn to the art and so if the art's right, you're, you're, you're playing with consumers all the time. Um, I don't really see them as sort of distinct ends of the spectrum. Um, and so to me, uh, you know, when you're uh, thinking about web services that interface with a consumer, I tend to think about it from the consumer's perspective as opposed to from the artist's perspective. The artist does what they do, right? They do the art. And everything else has got to, it's how do we knock the gates down? How do we, how do we get... Um, these people closer, you know, when you think about what, what the internet has represented in a lot of ways, it has, all it's done is, is taken these barriers between people who it used to take a lot of pieces and parts to get them together, yeah. you know, we're kind of here now, yeah. and arguably, you know, here. And, and to me, that, that is, um, that's kind of where I sit. I don't, I don't distinguish those two things as separate. What and what in particular, if you had to have to give advice for, um, well, let's get two things. One, let's start with the artist side. If you were giving advice to, to young artists at this point, um, you know, given what you just described, the closeness that they need to feel to the consumers, is there anything in particular that, that, that you're telling artists? Well, I mean, I tell artists to make the art right. You know, don't get in a hurry. Do, do something unique, do something interesting. Don't be so fixated on. The, the, the this over here if you don't have the course if the course stuff's not right yeah I mean and, and, and honestly a lot of people and, and this is a great thing right the democratization the fact that I don't have to work upstairs at, at $2,500 a day that I can work in my bedroom for amortized $2.50 over an 18 month right. period on a workstation um, it, that's a great thing that doesn't mean you're an artist sure right so there's a there's a lot to that, but, but I, my encouragement is focus on the art and then have a fifth beetle, understand what matters in, in your career, build a plan, and then work against the plan, which is part of why I like Artists Grow so much because it actually creates a forced work plan, right. which, you know, I mean, this idea that somehow if I'm an artist, I can't also, that if, if I have this quote-unquote side of my brain that I can't possibly have the other side, that's utter bullshit, right? right? You, you don't have a keeper anymore, and you really never did. I mean, there's an article today in Digital Music News about how Kenny Rogers is suing EMI for, and you look at the list of stuff, and it's like, I yeah. mean, really? It's heartbreaking. You know? Uh, so, so 
take control of your own destiny. And, and then at some point, if you want to, you know, if you want to go down the road, it's the same, it's the same thing as entrepreneurs. If you want to build a business to run your, for your life, right, then don't, don't sign up with a record company. If you want to be a star, sign up with a record company. If you want to build a business and enjoy it for your life and pass it on to your kids, don't take investment capital. If you want to build something and have an exit, take investment capital. It's not rocket science. Right. Well, that was actually going to be my next question: Is what's your advice to entrepreneurs? It's this. It's basically the same thing, you know. Focus on the core, you know. Make it right. Make the product. I mean, I looked at a thing today. Um, I'll give a plug to my friend Todd Featherling. He's got a company called Stratazen, which is this sick data platform. Like I sat there and went. It was like the first time I saw the new version of um, Big Champagne's platform. Right. I looked at Eric and I said, I never get gaga over technology because I always think I can do it better. Right. You, my friend, have done it better. Right. You know, I mean, when you see something like that and you go, oh, okay. This, so what is the, this is a data platform to do? It's a healthcare, it's healthcare related. Gotcha. But today we were meeting to talk about the abstract work that the platform does when applied to consumer marketing, when applied to music, when applied to, right. it's all the same shit. And so I w we were actually looking at that platform, and Todd and I have been brothers in arms in the city about the whole city thing for years. And I said, I've got a client that I I'm here to find out if this will work, and about eight minutes into it, I was like, okay, we're done. Right. We can move on to the next thing, this will work. I'll get you the flat files. Uh, and it made me drool, thinking about the, just what it, the, the power of that data. Wow. What and, and so is there anything else on the in, in terms of things that you have coming up that uh, that people should know about? When does this air? Don't know. Is it like in the in the in the, in the March time frame? In the March time frame. Okay, uh, then then it'll probably be safe to say this. Um, we're uh, work flow is uh, uh, co-sponsoring um, a pilot program with Google, uh, where uh, Google comes to a market. Um, they bring in a pretty pretty interesting team of people. They give an overview of, of Google sort of at the, at the 30,000 foot level and then there are several tracks um, for an afternoon of learning culminated with kind of an event at night and then that flops over into a startup weekend. And so you've got Google, all Google all day, first day, and then you've got 48 hours is the of startup point of that to educate the market on who Google is and what they do, or is it a... The, the, I think the point of it is is, is to begin to, to um, like I'll, I'll use the example, one of the, one of the tracks that we're going to run here in this market is, is digital media and the tools that Google offers. Right. So we have a community here that is afraid of technology in a lot of cases. Sure. And so rather than talk in the abstract about how Google can help them, we're actually going to show have Google here to show them how they can help Specifically. them. Specifically, right? And so um, tools for artists, you know, and why does this work, and wh what are the strategies associated with that, as opposed to, well, you could go Google it, right. you know. Why not get the guy who runs YouTube's content business here to talk about what they're doing? That's great. Um, and then to push that over into all of that energy that will get created in that event, the next three days will be applied to starting up new companies. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of work I'm interested in doing. That's excellent. Yeah, we should we should have, get a music hack day going in Nashville That's, too. You're, you just signed up to chair the committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love it. I love it here. You know, I hope you guys don't get sick of me because you've seen a lot of me over the. Over trust the, me, uh, we will not get coming, sick of you. In the, we in need the coming months. We need more brains like yours. I mean, the only way that this market does what we're talking about it doing is by getting guys like you here. People have to recognize that it's about the talent. It's about and I mean, that's the one thing I forgot to mention earlier. Two to one, we have the largest creative class of any city in the U.S. Yeah. Two to one. It's it's incredible here. I have to say, just you know, I've spent more time here um, over the over the past few months um, than I ever have, and it's it really is. It, you know, quality of life is outstanding, and um, and the people are are fantastic. Creative class, smart, insanely friendly. Um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, it's a little, a, at first you're like, this can't be real, but it actually is yeah, generally it, pretty real. No, it's true. It, at first, yeah, it's a little, it's almost, it's not off-putting, but you're definitely looking around the corner wondering where yeah, the, when the you're camera gonna get, is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where's the asshole? Yeah, or, right? or, or when you go down into, uh, when you go down to get a meet and three and, and the girl calls you hun yeah. and offers you sweet tea and you go, 
did I, is this a movie? What, what just yeah. happened here? No, it's real. <laughs> it's real. But, all right, well, thanks. I want to, I always want to wrap up by getting a recommendation. Okay. If you have something, a piece of music, Ooh. um, you know, something that you want to tell people to, to, uh, to, okay, to I got, buy, I got, stream, however it is they uh, want to acquire it. I've got a, a book. I, I'm on my second pass at the Keith Richards book. Killer. I'm, Killer. Book. You know, I'm I'm actually listening to the Keith Richards book on on morning runs now. Does he? Does he? Told, is he doing it? You, told you, know, about you know who's doing it? Who? Uh, Johnny Depp. Oh. Johnny Depp reads the first part. Now the now the part that I'm in because um, I'm still probably it's a long. It's a long book. It's, a, it's like a 24 hour yeah. endeavor to listen to this thing. Yeah. Um, and now there's another guy, an English guy, is now reading it with a lot more sort of Keefisms. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it appears from a vocal tonality standpoint, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I have to say that the there's a lot in that book that I find relevant to what we do because if you think about the way the Stones started out, yeah, three years before they made any money, he yeah. claims they had three days off in the first year of their yeah. existence. Like it's a lot of the, the well, sort of grind that we hear from young artists today. Yeah, welcome to the singles based business. Well, yeah, welcome to the welcome to how it works. Yeah, and, and when you think about even him talking, uh, he made this great comment. Uh, you know, in in my sort of decision making around building my studio, he talks about how having a huge desk and too many options actually gets you away from the focus, which is making sure the track is killer. Right. And all those records were made, and I know they bounced, and but they sure. were eight track recordings. Yeah. Do we really have to have forty eight tracks? Right. You know, uh, so so that that book, and then um, creativity I'm, loves boundaries. I'm so yeah, I'm so into the uh, uh, the new uh, Gillian Welch, David Wrong. Oh, me too. It's ridiculous. Me too. I mean, it's like, you know, you've got a uh, you that you set the bar. You could you could probably just kind of continue to, do, and they're just like, nah. I, I totally fuck agree. It, you know, we're going it's, here. It's so funny. And this this will be this will be you in five years. But I woke up this morning um, for whatever reason, had one of those song, songs that record in my head, and I sang three or four words from it, and my five year old finished the verse. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it's a we, we that that record has overtaken our house. Yeah, if it's, people don't have that Gillian Walsh, Stephen Rollins record, they or have, don't they know about together. them. I mean, they're they're yeah, okay. they're a great example of how to build a business. Absolutely, I mean, their business here is incredible. Um, yep. You know, Lori Condon. Yep. I don't know uh, David Gillian and all, but I know Lori who. Uh, who, who runs their label and what they've done and, and, the, and the level of perfection that they put into what they do, perfection that David's put into building that studio. Yep. And, um, you know, we were over at United Pressing last week and talking about, you know, at, at what point they might release those on vinyl. Yeah. And it's only when it's 100% perfect. And I'll leave it to David to go into exactly what that means. Yeah. But they really, you know, they've built that business and they've and they've really just, perf- you know, perfected their art. Well, the, and I think that that's why, and 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 they're doing that on their own terms with no one looking over their shoulder. Yeah. And, I mean, that to me, I mean, I, I can't th- that and and you know, back to kind of what am I doing? That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm building it the way I want to build it, uh, and I'm I'm not. I don't. No one's looking over my shoulder, and. It's just fine with me. Congratulations, man. That's so, a beautiful place to yeah, end it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming in, Mark. Good to see I you. I really appreciate it. Great yeah, to see absolutely. You. And thanks, everybody, for watching This Week in Music. Uh, it's another episode live from Ocean Way here in Nashville. And tune in next week. Appreciate it. I feel good, uh, even though I shouldn't. I'm chilling so hard, couldn't tell you where the hood is. Uh, I'm looking like a million bucks, sucker. I'm